Welcome back, my name is Russell Pearson uh, for another Rusty production and actually the one where we're gonna get a little bit more interesting. We're gonna start a fire today. So I've just on finished my forge. Um, it's a little rough and ready, uh, but we're gonna light it up just to make sure that it's all working properly. Uh, then I will be finishing off about cleaning up some of the bits around it, adding more of a table into the uh, into the struts and things that I've got set up on the table and um, you know, table top onto those struts. Uh, but first off, I'll show you. I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, so here's where I'm at. We've got our wings uh, all uh, strutted in. They're in the back there. They're they're bolted in and uh, they've been tightened up. <laughs> uh, we've got our bolts in here, just filling in the spaces left alone. We've got our our plug, uh, and that's all in there as well. We've uh, we've got our steel plate, which you can see here. <laughs> And I've got a, a bolt that runs through from the steel plate down to the side. Now, what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is ideally getting a, uh, a bracket to hold uh, that bolt there. That way, this plate doesn't really move back and forward. So that's the idea of, of that. And, and I'll probably end up doing the same thing over here as well. You can see there's a couple of little holes. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. There's, uh, it's not, not focusing. But there, I think you can see there's a little hole there. And I'll put another bolt through there. and. Again, we'll bracket that area. So that'll be nice and secure. I mean, it's already pretty secure, but that's because of the weight. So I'm just gonna make it even more secure. Uh, obviously we've, we've gone and done all the brackets. So they're on. We've got, okay, we've got <coughs> our inflow pipe and uh, we have our, our little uh, opening at the bottom here. Uh, I'm gonna put a heavy magnet on top of that and then that'll shut properly. As you can see, like the difference here, that's shut. Just with the magnet pressure, that'll be fine. <laughs> um, I've gone and bolted on uh, the pipe that connects to the bellows. And this, the idea was to make this removable. Now, it is removable. I haven't had to weld it on, which is fantastic. But that was a pain, an absolute pain to get in. So if you can imagine, <laughs> there's a screw or a bolt that goes all the way through to about here, inside here and here. And I've gone and welded at the top. And uh, obviously I've got the uh, trap door at the bottom. <laughs> so between those two things, there's not a lot of space here and here to actually get up inside. I certainly can't get my hand up in there. So what did I, how the hell was I able to put the, the, uh, the nut on the back of this so that I could actually screw it in nice and tight? Well, magnets, my friends, magnets. <laughs> I was able to use a combination of, of this, uh, this angle steel here this tiny little magnet, and here's a little bit of uh, ingenuity. I don't know if this is the right way to have gone about doing it, but I'll just show you what I've done. <laughs> I've taken this socket of the socket wrench, and I attached it to the magnet like so, pushed it up into the hole, this, this cavity here. I actually turned it on its side so it wasn't completely impossible. <laughs> and I was able to tap that underneath the, uh, like the I, I put the, nut inside the socket, put the socket up against the, the screw and actually was able to screw it in. Uh, mistake I made, uh, so you can learn from those mistakes, is that uh, I was coming in through the, I was going in through the bottom, <laughs> through this area here, and I started putting this one in first. Now obviously by putting that one in first, I couldn't get the magnet uh, and the piece of angle up. So I had to take that one out, put this one in first, and then I could go in and do the second one through here. So that was that was interesting, um, <laughs> but it's completely on there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the bellows. Yes, the bellows. Um, as I said, I think on a, on a previous video, every, uh, every YouTube novice blacksmith that I have seen doing one of these things has uh, gone out of his way to borrow, borrow his wife's uh, hairdryer. So in that tradition, I have done the same, and it is literally a temporary situation. So I do not know if this piece, <laughs> this piece of pipe that normally would connect to uh, the creepy crawly in my pool will actually um, melt, <laughs> or whether that's going to be fine. Certainly a temporary solution. I've got to, got to go and get a much smaller hairdryer, which I can actually um, put into the end of here or come up with a uh, some, some sort of socket or... Uh, suction cap or something that just to hold it all together but so the moment no, I've just got some masking tape um, we've got it all plugged in it does actually work and uh, there's air coming out from there 
I just approved there's air coming out from there. There's the, uh, the something. Yeah. Here's a little piece of plastic. You can see flying away every time I put it there. So plenty of air coming through and fantastically I've got different settings that I can set it to. So I've got one, two and three settings. Uh, we've got it cool as well so it doesn't overheat um, inside here. And uh, yeah, ideally I'm not going to break it because even though it does look pretty old, she's very happy with that one. And uh, I don't think uh, I don't think she's 100% aware that I have it. So to start the fire, I've got some newspaper and I've got uh, charcoal here. Let's see if you can see that. Charcoal, pretty large pieces, so I'll have to break that up into much smaller pieces. Um, I've been told sort of, you know, uh, 20 cent piece type sizes uh, that we need to actually get that to catch a light. Uh, and the other is that I've got some coal, sorry, not coal, coke here. And uh, as I've said in the previous video, we'll need to get a bit of air on that and get some real heat on that for it to really heat up. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get this started. So uh, you can watch me get this started just quickly. And then I'm going to get a piece of steel. I don't have my anvil up here, uh, but I've got a really cool surprise that I can show you later down the track. Something I did with the, uh, once I bring the anvil up, I'll, I'll show you what I got for the base of that. Um, but uh, we're not going to be able to hammer out any metal. I just want to get the metal hot enough uh, that it gets that sort of rich orange color that I'm going to want to start beating it out. So. That's where I'm at. Uh, I've got myself a, a beer, um, which is necessary on a, on a Friday as it is today. Um, and uh, for those who are interested, I am drinking a James Squire Golden Ale. So a little bit, a uh, little bit pretentious in some circles, but uh, I don't care. It was more affordable than the, uh, the, the Carlton Draft that I would normally drink. Um, so I did drink that today. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So I'll get this fire started and, uh, and I'll come back. Hopefully we don't need too much uh, paper, but uh, normally we'd need a little bit more than that to start a fire, but with the air, I think we might be right to go. So we're just experimenting. Uh, I'm going to try not to use too much uh, charcoal as well because um, it's going to create a lot of smoke and ideally in this very small area I've got here, I don't want that much smoke. So we'll see how we go. thinking I might have to actually get this thing rolling a bit before I turn the uh, turn the air on So you can see those sparks, that means the, uh, the charcoal is going. Uh, trying to get some heat on that, and ideally that will spread to the, co uh, to the coke.
just wanted to show you close up on that so you can see all the sparks going. At least I've got to watch so they don't get in any of this, this loose material here on the floor. And there's a bit of wood out the back there, but uh, we'll see how we go. Um, I do have a fire extinguisher. It's possible, and let me know in the comments below, but it's possible I put too much charcoal on this one. Um, I think I need charcoal to get really going, but uh, it's a very little forge, so I probably don't need that much. But I am loving this. This is awesome. I'll probably get a glove. I can smell the, um, I'm pretty sure that's coke that I can smell there because it's not something I'm used to smelling on a fire. Um, I've used charcoal before, obviously I've, I've had plenty of campfires. And the smell is, is, is very different. Um, which is cool. So it's really starting to heat up in the centre there and I think you can actually see the, the sort of orange and flaring out around the sides. Uh, I'll, I'll wait till maybe that's about you know twenty percent of that is hot right now. Uh, I think I'll uh, I'll leave it go until um, right. say about seventy percent of it's hot or even fifty percent of it's hot, and I'll I'll put a piece of metal in there and we'll see how we go. Okay, so that's been going for about ten minutes. Um, there's a nice glow in the centre. I don't know if it's right or not, uh, and I could be very being very impatient, but. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a go. I've got a, a piece of metal here. Um, I was actually my dad gave me this one. That's some of his older work. But I'm just gonna put this end here with the terrible weld that was my, my very first weld I ever did. <laughs> if you can see that, it's horrible. Um, I'm gonna put that in there and see if we can actually get uh, well get it red hot. That piece is too heavy. Um, all right, I'll have to work out something to actually hold on to heavier pieces. Well, I'll just put something smaller in. I'll just put this piece here. There we go. There we go. It's got these pretty rubbish pliers, but they'll, they'll do for something for, the, for now. The metal's getting hot. I'm not sure exactly how hot, um, but I'm going to leave the light off uh, and, and I'm going to pull it out and see where we're at. Um, if it's look, if it's not hot enough, I'll just put it back in. So it's getting there in the center there. You can see it's, if you can see it's starting to get red right through the center there, but it's still got a little ways to go. Put that in there, see if I can get it right in there. In the middle. Up. Right. So I've really got it going now, which is great. Um, I'll just put a little bit more coke on the top so it keeps going. Uh, but I reckon that's going to heat up pretty quickly now. Alright, so the light's back on. Um, I, was, I was looking for a place to actually bang some of this metal out somewhere. I was getting a little ahead of myself. But the reality is, unless I want to bang it on the side of this forge, and I might. <laughs> um, there's not really any place to do that. So um, I'm... I, the, the metal looks like it's getting pretty hot. I'll, uh, I'll pull it out, I'll show you. I might bang it on the side of this just to see if it does anything, but uh, one moment. There's the hammer. Uh, it's 
Looking pretty hot for me. One of the things I'm looking at too is how, how, how quickly it slows down, it cools down. Well, I can really feel the difference once it cools down. Uh, yeah, we're only really talking about three mil worth of steel here. I mean, this is really light stuff. Um, but successful experiment. Uh, forge works, clearly. Uh, I've, I've heated up the metal, uh, got it red hot and, and bent it. I'm really, really happy. So I'm gonna go grab myself another beer. I'm gonna uh, play around this a little bit more and I'll uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.